Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how you can create this really cool and unique 3D geometric mirror effect in Photoshop 2020 to really make your landscape and portrait photos stand out. And I'm going to start right now. Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is James and if it is the very first time to this channel and you want to learn all about Photoshop, Lightroom and everything camera related, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. Now in this tutorial guys I'm going to show you step by step on how to create this quite unique looking three dimensional mirror effect in Photoshop 2020. Now this uh, effect is only need two things. The first thing you're going to need is a geometric shape of your choice. Now you can find three dimensional geometric shapes on um, the internet, you can Google them, or if you would like, you can always make one yourself. And the second thing you're going to need is a photo, preferably a photo with an either a nice clean landscape or a photo with a portrait. So once you've chosen those two things, if you want to have a look at any of the pre-selected photos that I'll be using in my tutorial, make sure you go to the link in the description. You can download them all from there for free. But without further ado, let's get started. Okay guys, so the first thing you want to do is you want to choose a photo and then you want to choose a geometric three-dimensional shape. Now if you want to use the same shape that I'm using and the same photo, then go ahead to the link in the description and you can download them both for free and I'll show you what they look like now. So the first shape that we're going to do is I found this nice um, pentacle uh, which is a uh, PNG so it means it doesn't have a background and then I've got this photo of a road but I've also got a secondary photo that you can use which is a portrait photo. So we've got a landscape and a portrait photo that you can use for the same effect. Right. So what we, the first thing we want to do is go ahead and go to Photoshop. I've got the photo already loaded up here. And then the second thing, we want to place the shape. So we'll go and go to where we've saved the shape and then we're going to go and place it. Now I want to go and place it quite large and we're going to have it around here. So this is where we're going to be mo mainly focusing on the placement of the, photo, of the shape. Right, so I'm happy uh, with this, but again guys, you can place it anywhere you like. Right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to work out how many sides the shape is and then how many layers we're going to need for each of the sides. So this particular shape has got five sides, but if you've chosen a smaller shape, it might have three sides, or if you've chosen a more complicated shape, it might have even up to 30 sides. So it really does work out how many sides, and then what we need to do is make a uh, how many paths tools we're going to need. So if it's got five sides, we're going to need five different paths tools. So we're going to go to our... Uh, pen tool and what we're going to do is we're just going to select the blue side first. So we're going to go along here. I'm going to go back up to the top. Lovely. And then once we've finished with the first check, what we want to do is go to our paths. We want to double click to make sure that we've saved the path and then we can save anything you like but I'm just going to keep this default name. And then what we want to do is we want to go to a new layer and this is where we want to start colorizing it. So we want to go to our uh, command, click on that, so to create it into a selection. We want to go to our layer one, which will be this section of the shape, and then we just want to colorize it. So I'm going to colorize it with that blue that we've just made. There we go. So as you can see, if I turn the shape off, that first section is already there. Brilliant. So what we need to do now is we're going to do the red, show, red side. So I'm going to... Uh, very similar to the previous. So we're going to go along here. Lovely. And then again, we guys, we're going to go to the path tool. We're going to double click to make sure that we've saved the path. Then we're going to go command click on that layer. What we're going to do then is going to go to a new layer to make sure we've got a the each layer needs to be each side of the shape. And then we're going to just colour this in red. Now you don't have to colour them in different colours but it will be helpful in uh, the next step that I'll show you as we're going to try and work out what part of the photo needs to be duplicated 
uh, but you can just name uh, color them all the same color but just for this tutorial guys I'm going to show you how uh, by just using the colors just as a reference so we're going to color this color there lovely then we're just going to do the bottom tool so remember guys using the pen tool you want to select each of this you can also use the lasso tool or any selection tool of your choice but my favorite is the pen tool because we can always go in afterwards and change it so I'm going to go to our paths we're just going to double click on that work path to save it then we're going to command click on the thumbnail brings up a new selection and then we want to go and make a new layer and then just going to color it with that lovely so by the end of it you should have as many sides as there are layers so if you've got a five-sided shape like myself you're going to or you should have five new layers go along here there we go that is perfectly matched up and then we're going to go to our path tool again remember to double click command click on the path tool layer thumbnail and that will pop up with that and then remember guys to click a new layer and then to colorize that layer just using either the brush or the paint bucket tool lovely so then if we go to our uh, pex um, pentagon shape uh, effect png if we turn that off as you can see we've got this lovely effect left afterwards right so the next thing we need to do now is we need to start applying the reflections of the surrounding atmosphere and the surrounding photo onto this shape right so what we're going to do first is we're going to just turn each one of them off apart from the first one and then what we want to do is duplicate the background layer so we're going to press command J on our keyboard that will duplicate it you can also drag it down to the new layer icon in the bottom right hand corner and then you want to move it just above that new layer icon and you'll see it disappears then what you want to do is clip it to the layer so you can right click and then what you want to do is to go to create clipping mask or what you can do is hold down alt in between the two layers and you can do the same then what we need to do is move the photo so we're going to press command T on our keyboard and then what we're going to do is just make it ever so slightly smaller and as you can see this effect is already starting to take shape a little bit and what I'm going to do is make it look just a little bit different to the background so we're going to go for something like so lovely and what we need to do now guys is do that five times for each of the sides so we're going to press command J we're going to move it above that layer 2 we're going to command click or what you can do is right click and go down to uh, cre create clipping mask and then what you want to do is press command T or free transform up in the edit here so it's uh, in this section here of the edit and then you just want to slightly move the photo and as you can see it starts to create this reflection effect so I'm going to make this a bit bigger move it over probably to that side there lovely and then what we want to do is turn on layer 3 so that's this very small portion here again guys pressing command J or dragging it down to the new layer icon dragging it above to a top of layer 3 remember to create a clipping mask and then you want to press command T or go up to edit free transform and then you can play around with the photo to make it look like a reflection so we're going to go for something like that right so we just need to do the bottom half so we've got that sun and that one left so we're going to do this one here so we're going to press command j drag it up to above layer four press click and command or again guys you can also go to create a clipping mask and then you want to go to command t or free transform which is found here and then you just want to slightly change the shape and angle of it to make it look like a reflection. So we're going to go for that. And then the final shape, we're going to drop it here.
lovely. Brilliant. So this effect is almost done, but what we need to do now is start applying some gradients and some effects to each one of these individual shape edges to create this kind of glow effect. So to create it look like a kind of a realistic uh, kind of mirror. So what we want to do now is start grouping everything that we've done into certain groups so we don't start getting lost within the photo or in all the layers. Because as you can see, the layers are starting to get duplicated quite a lot and it might look a little bit messy. So what you want to do is uh, cl click on the layer one layer and that background layer copy, press Command G and that will group it. And you want to do that for each of the edges. So we're gonna press Command G on all of these. And as you can see, we've got five groups for five edges. So if you've got a three shaped uh, effect, you'll have three groups. Or if you've got 30, you'll have 30 groups. So what we need to do now is we need to start applying each of the effects. So we're gonna to go to our gradient one here, as you, or group one, should I say. We've got our new layer here, and what we want to do is duplicate that layer. So we're gonna to go to new layer, and we're just gonna press Command J on our keyboard, and you can see we've got a new layer here. So we're gonna drag that above, as you can see with this, and what we want to do now is turn the fill of this shape here, this blue one, to zero percent. Lovely, so it goes completely invisible. Then what we want to do is start stylizing it. So what we're gonna do is double click on that layer, and as you can see, it pops up with our layer stylizing box. The first thing we want to do is go to inner glow. So we're gonna press inner glow here, and as you can see, it creates this effect. But what I'm gonna do is just turn it to default, and then what you want to do is increase the size, and then you just want to reduce the opacity slightly. So I'm going to reduce this to 20%. And as you can see, it's created this nice kind of halo look effect just around the edge. And what we want to do is do that to each shape. So I'm gonna talk to you through it again. So let's press Command J on our keyboard. Go into group two, press Command J. We're gonna bring that above the, uh, the um, photo layer. We want to turn the fill to 0%. We want to double click, and then all you need to do now after you've created that effect is just press Inner Glow. And what it will do is it will duplicate all those effects we've made on this one, and it will duplicate it onto the next. And it will kind of save it as a preset until you close Photoshop. So you can always use it again. So I'm just going to do it just for the last of these. Again guys, remember pressing Command J to duplicate it. And then you want to raise it above that layer, and then you want to apply the inner glow. So I'm just gonna do it to the last layer. Oops, just go to press Command J, drag it above, make sure we turn the fill to zero, make sure we don't do it to opacity because opacity will remove the photo, it will remove the effect, make sure it's fill. And then we want to do inner glow and press OK. And as you can see, this effect is being evenly applied across the whole shape. And then we're gonna to go to the very last one. We're gonna duplicate that and then we're gonna drag it above, make sure we've got the blending mode of inner glow applied, and we turn the fill to zero. Lovely, and as you can see, this effect is really starting to take shape. So what we need to do now is we just want to add in a few dark spots to where the reflection would be darker versus where the light areas are. So what we can do is go into each shape and work out where we want the dark points. So with this shape here, I want it darker, just a little the bottom here, as a little shadow, as I feel the sun and all the light is coming from the distance, and this would be cast a bit darker. So what we can do is we can just create a new layer in that group, so that's this shape here, group five. We're gonna create a new layer. We're gonna make sure that we've clipped everything to our main layer at the bottom here, so we don't have any bleed over. We want to go to our brush tool. We want to select a nice dark black color, so something like this. And then what you want to do is create a nice soft brush, like so, and you just want to dab once or twice, covering that area. Lovely, I think that will work. And then what we want to do is turn that layer, so this is the layer six here, which is the dark layer. We want to turn it to multiply in our blending mode options. And then we want to reduce the opacity probably down to around 20% or whatever you feel is right, I think maybe 40% for this particular one. Lovely. And then we want to do the same for a few others. So with this one here, I think I'm going to do the opposite effect. I'm going to lighten it slightly. 
So we're going to go into our uh, glow layer here. We're going to press our new layer icon. Make sure everything is clipped to the original layer 3 copy. So that is the actual shape itself. And then what you want to do is instead of choosing black this time, we're going to choose white. And I'm going to add a little bit in there. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is choose a little bit of the sky over here. So I'm going to choose this nice orangey colour. And then I'm going to click along there. And then all you need to do is remember to go to blending mode. Instead of multiply, we're going to choose screen. And that will brighten it. And then again, guys, you want to reduce the opacity to whatever that you like. Lovely. So we're almost finished creating this effect. There's only one more thing to create and that is the shadow. So what we need to do now is create a shadow of this on where it would be. Now I feel the shadow would be at the bottom right hand corner here. So we've got this shape here, so we're gonna click using the pen tool, so that's P on the keyboard, or you can find it on the left hand side. We're just gonna draw just a generic shadow shape. So I think that shape I think would work for this if it was casting. Lovely, so we're gonna to go to our path tool. As you can see, it's this work path here. All you need to do is double click. Again, we're doing a very similar to the effect here, and we're going to make sure we click the selection by command clicking on there. And we want to go to our background layer, as we want this below all of this effect here, and we want to create a new layer. So once we create a new layer, that'll be layer eight. We want to make sure that we've got black selected, so go ahead and choose black in your uh, color picker tool. Get the brush, and we just want to brush along here like so. Lovely. But this shadow is way too harsh and it doesn't look realistic at all. So we're going to add some blur to it. Now, the best blur for an effect that has a cast a very light shadow would be using motion blur. So if you what we want to do is go to filter at the top here, go to blur, and then what we want to do is choose motion blur. And when we choose motion blur, what you want to do is choose the, where the shade or where the sunlight is coming from. So in this photo, it's coming from a very slight upward angle. So I've chosen minus 25, I think, for this particular shape. And we want to turn the distance all the way up to probably around 800 pixels. And as you can see, it creates this kind of effect here where it's just slightly haloing around the edge and it's not a, a crisp, sharp shadow, which is perfect for sunset shadows. So all we have to do is press OK. And then we just want to turn the shadow to multiply, which will darken all of the pixels. And then we just want to reduce the opacity all the way down to where you feel happy with. Lovely. And there's a few more effects I think we want to add to it. So I think we want to brighten the entire photo slightly. So I think what we're going to do is just brighten it just slightly, raising the blacks and midtones ever so slightly. I think I'm going to create a slightly darker shadow. I think I'm going to increase it to 70 like so. And then I think we're gonna add a uh, color overlay layer. So I think we're gonna to go to our color lookup and I think I'm gonna add a nice LUT file and I think the one I'm gonna choose is two strip. Ah, uh, this is looking a lot better now. And then I think I'm gonna change this to color. And then I think I'm just gonna reduce the opacity probably down to around 60%. Lovely. So there is the before and after on how to create a geometric three-dimensional mirror effect in Photoshop 2020. Brilliant, and there we go guys. So that is how you can create this amazing three-dimensional mirror geometric shape effect in Photoshop 2020. And again guys, if you want to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, it really, really does help my channel grow. Also, if you want to hit the bell notification, so you don't miss any of my latest content. Also guys, I've got stuff out on the Teespring store, I've got hoodies and I've got t-shirts, and I update the designs every single week, so make sure to check that out. But until next time guys, keep creating.